Welcome to the lecture number two of numerical solution of partial differential equations. Since partial differential equations is a vast topic, so we will discuss only parabolic PDs and we will discuss only one method to solve parabolic PDs and this method is a numerical method FTCS. Okay, in parabolic PDs, parabolic PDs is still a vast topic and we are only considering a one equation which is 1D heat equation or diffusion equation. It is parabolic in nature. So we are going to discretize this heat equation and we will solve it numerically. Now to solve parabolic PDs, there are major two types of methods which exist in literature, explicit methods and implicit methods. Explicit methods. In explicit methods, we have more known values at previous time level and we have one unknown value at the current time level. This is the graphical demonstration of explicit methods. At n time levels, we have three known values and based on these three known values, we are going to find this unknown value. There are major three types of explicit methods that are well known in literature. The FTCS method, Richardson method, du Fort frankel method. So in this video, we are going to cover FTCS method. This is the uh, graphical picture of a complete mesh uh, for explicit methods. Like these three values should be known from initial and boundary conditions and based on these three values we are going to find this one value these all values are also known from boundary conditions these are also known from boundary conditions these are all are known from initial conditions so based on previous three values we will find one value similarly uh, by using this technique of previous values to find current values, we will find all these values. And at the next time level, we will utilize these values to find the upper values. This is how explicit schemes works. In case of implicit methods, we have more unknown values and we are given only one known value so we have to find the solution based on this one known value so this is the graphical demonstration of implicit schemes this value is known at previous time level and at current time level we have these three unknowns the famous uh, implicit methods in literature are btcs method also known as lazunen method crank nicholson method and beta formulation Let's discuss the very first method to solve the heat equation using FTCS method, which is an explicit method. FTCS method stands for forward in time, central in space. So for time derivative, we will use forward differentiation and for space derivative, which is a second derivative, we will use central approximation that we learned in lecture number one. So for partial u by partial t, you can see I applied the forward differentiation since I freeze the space coordinate and one step forward in time and at that step again divide by time jump alpha as it is. And for space coordinate, I am using a central difference formula of second order. And here you can see i plus 1, i and then i minus 1. 1 minus 2 1 are the weights and time coordinate is freezed since I am moving in space coordinate and divided by delta x square. After rearranging this equation, I will get something like this and all these values are constant. These values should be given in our question or these values are the values that we take to solve our PDs. Alpha should be given in question and delta t should be the time step that we will take and delta x will be the space step that we will take to solve over PDU. All these values are constant so I am merging this into a one constant and naming it as d. After further rearranging the final form of the discretized 
heat equation using FTCS method is this equation. Let's discuss the first disadvantage of FTCS method. In FTCS method, it is unstable for d greater than 1 by 2 which means this method is stable only if the value of this d constant will come as 0 0.5 or less than 0 0.5 otherwise this scheme will divert okay let's solve a question to understand ftcs how ftcs method works and then we will develop the matlab code of ftcs method Given a 1D heat equation, uh, you can see here alpha is 1 since there is no alpha. Alpha is diffusivity constant over thermal conductivity constant. The domain of the PD is defined. Now the PD is complete. Like my spatial domain should be within 0 to 1 and my time domain is greater than 0. So P this PD is applicable within this space domain and for all times greater than zero. Now I should know what is the behavior of temperature at boundaries and at time t is equal to zero. If this is a heat equation and this is a heat equation in a 1D rod. So if this is my 1D rod and the value at this corner and this corner should be known the value of temperature if this is a heat equation should be known at these corner which are known as boundary condition so at the left corner it is u of 0 t at x is equal to 0 for all time and at the right corner at x is equal to 1 for all time the temperature value is 0 these are the two boundary conditions at left end and the right end of a rod. Initial condition says that at time is equal to 0 for all x like inside the all the domain inside all the rod at t is equal to 0 the temperature distribution is done by this sine function. Now to solve this PDE we are required to take a space step as 0 0.2 and time step as 0 0.02 and we have to find all the values of u for t is equal to 0 to t is equal to 0 0.06 since this pd is eligible for all times greater than 0 we have to stop somewhere to stop our calculation so now my time domain is from 0 to 0 0.06 and the jump in time will be 0 0.02 and the space domain is 0 to 1 and the jump in the spatial domain that I will take will be 0 0.2. Okay, let's solve this PDE using FTCS method. Before uh, solving the PDE, we have to identify the total number of nodes in time and spatial domain. Since in X, we are moving from 0 to 1 with this step size, so I will be at 0, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8 and finally reach at 1. The nodes will be, total number of nodes will be 6. If I start from 0, they will be 5. Like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. They will go till 5. Total number of nodes are 6. In time domain, I have to move from 0 to 0 0.06 with a step size 0 0.02. So uh, time will move from 0, 0 0.02, 0 0.04 and finally reach at 0 0.06 and the nodes for time will be 0, 1, 2, 3. Total number of nodes are 4. If I start from 0, I end up at 3. Let's look at a complete picture of a mesh that we have to deal with. This is a complete values of unknowns and known values in our mesh. The green values are the ones that are known from initial and boundary condition. These values should be known from right boundary condition. These values should be known from left boundary condition. And the lower conditions are, no, lower values are known from the initial condition. So these black values are the values that we have to find. These are 12, 
total 12 values in number so this is time level 1 time level 2 time level 3 time level 4 and if I uh, say n is moving from 0 to 3 time level 0 this should be known from initial condition time level 1 time level 2 and time level 3 now let's find out the values of these exterior nodes like the nodes which we know from the boundary conditions from boundary conditions boundary condition 1 which is u of 0 t which means uh, space is freezed at i is equal to 0 and for all n values the value is 0 so if i uh, give the values to n n is 0 1 2 and 3 total number of boundary conditions will be 4, u0, 0, 0, u0, 0, 1, u0, 0, 2, and u0, 0, 3. So these all values are 0. u1, t means the right boundary condition, which means the value of i will be the last node, which is the 5. You can see from here, the last node of i is 5. So u5 for all time, n is 0. So I will give n values now u05, u15, u25, u35, these all values are 0. Let's discretize the initial condition. So u of x0 means uh, at time 0 for all i values, uh, the value should be known from this sine function. So sine pi, I am using i indices with x since it is depending on the x value so u 0 0 will be uh, at 0 node the value of x is 0 at 1th node the value of x is 0 0.2 you can see from here at 1 node it is 0 0.2 at node number 2 it is 0 0.4 0 0.6 0 0.8 and then 1 so these values are the values that I am going to give the sine function to find my initial condition at each node. So I know my all the exterior nodes now. Now is the time to find the interior nodes. For interior nodes, I am using the FTCS scheme. This is the final discretized heat equation according to FTCS scheme. In this case, my D will be, you can see, uh, all the values are given alpha is 1 delta t is given in the question delta x also given in the question the value of d is 0 0.5 which means this scheme is still stable since at each time level i have four unknowns you can see from here at time level this i have four unknowns at the next time level i have also four unknowns so I have four unknowns at each time level. So I'm going to have four discretized equation to find these unknowns. So I will give this general equation the value i is equal to 1, i is equal to 2, i3, i4 to get my four discretized equation to find my unknown. When I will give i values to this general equation, I will get these four general equations. These are the equations that I have to find at each time level. I have to give the value of n to get the value at n plus 1. So let's perform the iteration number 1. I will give n is equal to 0 and I will get something like this from the above equations. Now don't worry about all these values. These values are known from initial conditions. I will put all these values and this will be the answer that I will get. Now at time level 1 I know all the values now. I will use these time level 1 values to find the values at time level 2. So I will again put the n is equal to 1 in the main 4 equations and I will get something like this. These all values are known from the above data over from the boundary data and i will get these values at time level 2 at time level 3 i will use the previous values plus the boundary conditions 
to find the next value. So let's have a general look of our mesh and the values that we computed. These green values are the values that are given in boundary conditions and these are the given values from initial conditions. These are the values I computed at time level 1 from first four equations then time level 2 from this second four equations and these are the values that I computed in third iteration. So this is how FTCS method works. Now let's develop the MATLAB code of FTCS method. Let's open MATLAB for this purpose and let me open a new script file and here I will write my code. As I always say that first step in coding is to define your ingredients. In this case the ingredients are uh, the length of my rod which will be 1 minus 0 ending point minus starting point total time of simulations which is 0 0.06 in our test problem so total time will be 0 0.06 minus starting time which was 0 the diffusivity constant in our uh, test problem was 1 and the spatial step size was 0 0.2 while the time step size was 0 0.02 d is that convergence constant whose values should be 0 0.5 or less than 0 0.5 for ftcs method to converge now let's move forward and let's identify the total number of nodes in our test problem so total number of nodes depends on this formula which is starting ending limit minus starting limit divided by the step size so for space it will be 1 minus 0 divided by the st space step size which was 0 0.2 but this formula gives us the total number of intervals and not the total number of nodes as you can see in this case total number of intervals are 5 but the total number of nodes are 6 for the time, it will be uh, ending time minus starting time 0 0.06 divided by the time step size will come as 3. So as you can see, 3 are the total number of intervals and not the nodes. So nodes are always 1 greater than the total number of intervals. So let's write this formula in coding. So here my space nodes will be total length divided by space step. And I'm adding 1 into the answer because I am concerned with the space nodes and not the intervals. And m will be my time nodes which will come as total time t divided by time step size plus 1. And again I am concerned with the total number of nodes in time. Now let's discretize the space domain and time domain. For that I need the vector in which I will store the space discretization values and time discretization values. So x is going to be a vector for space discretization values and t is going to be a vector for time discretization values. Next I have to assign values. For this I will use loops. So these two loops will discretize my space domain and time domain and this is for space domain and this loop is for time domain. Let's run this code and see what values I will get in x vector and t vector. Let me save this code for this purpose. So I saved this code with the name ftcs.m. Before moving forward, uh, let me make a correction here. Here I will use n because my loop variable is n and also here I will use n the nth value will be something like this and I added these zeros here because zeros are the starting value of time and starting value of space also when there will be some different values so you will just edit those values here 
so let's run this code to see the time and space discretization so the space discretization is like this 0 0 0.2 0 0.4 0 0.6 0 0.8 and 1 and time discretization is something like this you can verify it from this example also these are the space values and these are the time values at different nodes now the next step is to define the dimension of our overall mesh all the values that we need to find so from here you can see uh, the space nodes are 6 and the time nodes are 4 in this case so my final answer was a uh, 4 cross 6 matrix 4 was the time nodes and 6 was the total space nodes so my dimension of the mesh matrix will be something like this I am defining the mesh matrix with U initial entries will be 0 and the dimension of U matrix is capital M rows capital N columns so let me run this code and you can see for this case I have 4 rows and 6 columns just like I have them here so I defined my U matrix now next step is to define the initial and boundary conditions of this matrix so as you can see from here my left boundary condition takes the first column of U and the right boundary condition takes the last column of U while the initial condition takes the last row of the U so here I will define my boundary conditions like these so the first column of u will be equal to 0 since my boundary condition was 0 in this case uh, let me change it to something else to show you what will happen ok so my left boundary condition will take u first column will be 1 if my left boundary condition will be 1 and my right boundary condition will take the place u nth column so u nth column will be equal to 1 while the initial condition will be u m -th row m is the last row of the u it will be signed by x since i discretized the x already so it will automatically adjust all the values so let's see the u here i am removing this semicolon to show you here you can see left boundary condition right boundary condition and the initial condition here you can see that my initial condition override the corner boundary conditions uh, in case the boundary condition and the initial conditions produce the different result at this corner value so if you want to avoid this you just have to simply write uh, 2 to n minus 1 column and 2 to n minus 1 value of x here so now my initial condition will not override the boundary condition you can see from here ok let's move forward we have assigned the initial and boundary conditions and let me correct this my initial condi boundary conditions was 0 for this particular question now is the time to find the inner values interior nodes and we are finding the interior nodes by using FTCS method so the general equations of FTCS method will be like this now I have to use nested for loops uh, my outer loop will uh, work for time levels and my inner loop will work for space levels at that particular time so let me let me write that thing here this will be the shape of my nested loop in which i will write ftcs scheme my n is started from 1 and ending at m my i is starting from 2 and ending at n minus 1 the reason behind this is when you find the space equations at every time level you skip 
the first i which was i is equal to 0 and you skip the last i which was i is equal to 5 but for time levels you just start from n is equal to 0 you do not skip the first n so that's why because i do not have 0 in matlab there is no zeroth entry of any matrix so i have to start n from 1 and i have to start i from 2 i am skipping the first i which was i is equal to 0 okay so let's write the uh, ftcs scheme here so this is how I will write the FTCS scheme inside this loop. You can verify from here. So I use the uh, time indices first because time is moving in rows and space is moving in columns. Or simply you can say that uh, time levels are in rows like n is equal to this is n is equal to 0 level and 1 level and 2 level and n is 3 level all these are the rows of the matrix now here is one important thing that i introduce the initial condition in the last row so if i did that then i have to use this time loop backwards or another way is that i can introduce the initial condition in the first row of the u matrix both the ways are correct but this one seems simple that if i introduce my initial condition in the first row of u instead of i am introducing it in the last row of u there is one more correction here i have to move in time till m minus 1 because here the last value of n that I am putting here is 2 but my total values of n was 0, 1, 2 and 3 so I am putting n minus 1 values or m minus 1 values so here my time loop will move till m minus 1 so let's run this thing now and from here you can see I have 4 time levels I have values of space domain at four different time levels. So this is time level 0, time level 1, time level 2 and then time level 3, last row. Let's verify these values. So n is equal to 0 values are obviously the initial conditions. So we can see here the initial conditions are these and then the time level 1 we have 0 0.4755 and here we will have the same values and then the time level 2 and time level 3 also so the code is working fine and this code is general we can just edit the space length time length or the initial condition boundary conditions to make this code work for every possible heat equation of a rod so obviously this code is for 1d heat equation so let's do some little tests uh, like if i am moving in time till 0 0.06 but i am taking a small more smaller step size like 0 0.01 and in space i am taking also a uh, smaller step like 0 0.1 so let's see how this works in that case so you can see from here i am going to have 11 columns now and i have more time levels since i have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 rows you can see here that my m is 7 now and capital n is 11 now so i have 11 nodes of space and 7 nodes of time now also i can change the length of my rod from here total time 
ending time of simulation from here like if i want to see what will happen till time is equal to one unit and also i can edit the initial and boundary conditions if i want to give uh, variable boundary conditions so i will do that here i can also give non zero boundary condition like 2 or 2 left boundary condition is 2 and right boundary condition is 1 my code will also work for that particular case let's run this and you can see my right boundary condition is 1 my left boundary condition is 2 and code is working fine so let's modify this code to see value of unknown function u more clearly at some particular time and at particular space so i am removing the u from here i do not want to see this matrix on the screen and i am using fprintf command so this is the modification i used the fprintf command before the loop started to compute the unknown function u and whenever the loop computed the unknown function u i used the fprintf command to see the value of u at particular time level and at that space level i am printing the time level at which uh, u is computed and space level at which u is computed and then finally the u and after this inner loop ended i am then again using the fprintf uh, command to change the headings it's not about just change the heading it's about creating a gap that we are moving to the next time level okay let's run this code and you can see from here that i have time level space level and the value of u at those time and space level when the time level change like t is equal is changing from 0 0.02 i have new values and again for 0 0.03 time and all the space levels i have values of u and at last i have t is equal to 0 0.06 and values of u now one more thing is we can generate the 2d plots but for 2d plots we can only have uh, two values two variables like we can generate a 2d plot of t versus u or we can generate a 2d plot of x versus u so for t versus u we have to freeze some value of space we want to uh, see how the temperature is changing with respect to time at some particular space value and for x versus u we have to freeze the time because we want to see the temperature change with respect to the space at some particular time so let's draw some plots so these are my two sample plots uh, i am plotting the first figure uh, x versus u at time t is equal to ending time and since the ending time is the last row of the u which is mth row of the u so x versus mth row will give me the x versus u plot at time t is equal to last time which was 0 0.06 in this case and the second plot is t versus uh, u plot time versus temperature plot at x is equal to the center of the rod and this is how i will reach at the center of the rod at some particular time so this is basically the center column of the u matrix so let's run this to verify the plots and i am having the two figures you can see the first figure is x versus temperature plot at t is equal to 0 0.06 and the second figure is time versus temperature plot at the center of the rod there is one thing that we haven't noticed that these plots are not looking fine the reason behind this not only the plots the values of unknown function are very strange and ridiculous like there are very jumps in them 
The reason behind this is the value of that d, the d constant, the convergence constant, constant that should be 0 0.5 or less than 0 0.5. So to overcome this problem, we have to adjust our space step and time step in order to get the value of d that must be less than 0 0.5 or at least 0 0.5. So let's adjust this space step to 0 0.05 and time step to 0 0.001. Let's see what will be the value of d now and the value of our unknown function now. Okay, so the graphs are looking more smooth uh, since the value of step sizes are very small and also the values of u are not strange now there are not big jumps in them and you can see the value of d is 0 0.4 which is less than 0 0.5 so ftcs method is converging let's have another look on the plots so this plot is showing the behavior of the temperature at lost time which is t is equal to 0 0.06 position y so at these start of the rod the temperature is maximum which was 2 uh, defined by our boundary conditions and at x is equal to uh, 1 the boundary conditions was defined as 1 you can see from there that where we defined our boundary condition and also uh, you can observe the t versus u plot in t versus u plot this is how the temperature is changing with respect to time at the center of the rod. So at the center of the rod, we have temperature 1 at t is equal to 0 and the temperature decreased and then suddenly started increasing after t is equal to 0 0.0025. You can change the boundary conditions and uh, see some more interesting result but be careful about this d it must be 0 0.5 or less than 0 0.5 in order to ftcs method to converge uh, i guess that's enough for ftcs method see you people in next video